Let's get let's get after it, Cap. Hello, welcome. What's up? Uh, I had a whole bunch of videos planned out for this week. Um, uh, I actually had a bunch of stuff planned out, and then uh, it, the weather's been like this. Uh, yeah, so it's been cold. So instead, we're doing something different today. Uh, we're gonna go back here just a couple weeks. If you have not looked at some of the recent news coming out of Cat, releasing a little bit more information on that Catalyst platform. Um, and uh, the comments have been pretty interesting. Like it's uh, <laughs> there is a uh, a lot of comments here tearing it apart. I was actually looking for the clip of the live release at uh, Heydays because there's that uh, the moment where the rep is done his presentation, and he's like, "Woo! Who's gonna pre-order one?" And then it's just silence, except for like you can hear one guy way in the back, "Woo!" waving his little Arctic cat flag. Okay, so as of uh, just a couple weeks ago, actually, they did release a little bit more information of the Catalyst, and uh, since I can't do those other video series, let's catch up on it now if you haven't already. So, I think a lot of uh, what has had people upset is the fact that um, there is no 800 class uh, engine for this thing yet. And actually, as of right now, as of making this video, there is still no more information on a newer engine that I can find. So let's go in a little deeper on this sled and let's uh, let's see a little bit of what it's all about because uh, they have released some new information on it. Uh, so let's go check it out. So first off, this is what sled manufacturers have been doing for the last 10 years plus. It's actually been quite a while. It is uh, working on centralizing the design, on uh, making sure that center of gravity is right in the middle, making sure that center of gravity is also low, and Cat's pushing that again, as all manufacturers are. So they're using lighter parts now, um, taking some weight out of the plastics, um, and we're putting those heavier components in uh, an even lower position. So one of the things I'm talking about here by doing that, having that center of gravity low, is having uh, the engine designed as a, a laydown engine. That's actually something that Cat's been doing for quite a while. A lot of their cylinders are laid back already. If you just try to get at the spark plugs, uh, you'll see that it's almost impossible to get the spark plugs out of a lot of 800 series anyway. A lot of the two, the two straw, I can't remember what the M6 is like, but um, I, don't, I don't see barely any of those around ever. Um, but it is it is that slope design, so they're they're keeping that sloped engine just to keep that center of gravity low. Um, while we are on engines here, I might as well just address that for one moment. So it is a 600cc class engine for the first year of the Catalyst. There is no 800 class, there is no 850, 900, supercharger, whatever, whatever you think Cat's going to do, because we don't know what Cat's going to do as of right now. But that 600 is also making 125 horsepower, and I've ridden an M6 before for um they rip like they're not really feeling that much different than an 800 honestly like it's an m6 a 600 cc mountain sled it's uh it's a reliable powerful little engine it is but you can take that from the guy who's 150 pounds with that engine selection they're going to be pushing in those uh adapt clutches again uh, i'd imagine we'll see a little bit of modification on them uh, 5% reduction in inertia, and of course, if you have reduced inertia, reduced inertia always means a little bit more power. That's why they're also taking, uh, the chains out, and people are putting belt drive kits and stuff, because a belt drive kit will actually give you a little bit more power. There, there is a, uh, a formula to it. Every one pound less rotational mass is a certain amount of horsepower you get. I don't remember what it is, though. But basically, less rotating mass, more horsepower. Same things with tracks. That's that's why uh, Cat's tracks, even though they are three inch big log tracks, are still lighter than the 2.6 inch tracks uh, that they put in. They still put in now, and that they put in uh, up to a few years ago. So while we are on driveline stuff, the days of the chain case in your cat is over. So they've switched everything off of this machine uh, from that chain case design to a belt drive design. So you no longer have to service your chain case. It would be just like the Polaris's. You just pop on a new belt, you break the belt in, 
uh, and you go. With the clutching, it looks like there's also going to be upgrades to the TCL. And anybody who's had a problem with the TCL knows exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, it seems on a lot of these machines, these, uh, these links would either vibrate themselves apart or just simply crack under pressure. So hopefully uh, this is a fix for that. Cat is also claiming that they have some new running boards. And it's not just a new design, it looks like they are a new material, uh, and they call it a low thermal conductive running board. Just to help you keep some of that snow off. And uh, I mean, every pound of snow or ice that you can get off your running boards, I mean, that, that's a huge help in the mountains. So one thing that is going to be different on these is that uh, cat owners have, uh, it's, it's been a love-hate relationship, and uh, it's this. Isn't, isn't that Sean's wall art? It's actually my wall art, man. So Ben, crazy idea, we just run it like that. We just put the seat gas tank on. It's fine, Ben. <laughs> yeah, so we won't be doing too much of that anymore because we've moved to a one-piece chassis with the new cats. So as far as the body goes, it's still that 36-inch ski stance. Cat has been boasting here, besides the fact that everything's gonna be lightweight in their plastics, uh, all the plastics are also going to be completely removable without tools. They said this once before, they said this with the Ascender, but uh, you still need a T30 to get under that front bumper and fight with a bunch of snow in there uh, or a bunch of ice. A lot of time you can't get that screw, so if you need to take off the hood, uh, it's a wet day or it's wet and icy, it freaking sucks. So let's, let's hopefully there's a, an improvement on that. With the hood, they're also saying no more airbox leaks. So that's been a problem that's been ongoing for, oh boy, pretty much since 2012. Uh, around then, that's when that uh, airbox design first came out. And it seemed to just get worse when they switched everything over to the Ascender. Um, I've seen airbox and a little bit of moisture in a lot of sleds, but... Uh, I've seen a lot of water in Ascender air boxes before, and there's fixed kits for that. Uh, and especially the 18s had more problems than just the air boxes. They actually had problems with uh, the entire intake system being uh, flawed in the sense that the vents wouldn't actually like fit down over the uh, over the hood properly. So you'd have these big air gaps in there, and you'd have to go and fill them with silicone, and uh, it was it was kind of a mess. So if you have an 18, check around your intake vents on top of your hood, right between your steering post, and just have a look in there and make sure there's no gaps. So since they also modified that steering post, um, on the M's, they're now going to put a completely vertical steering post in. Uh, in the past, CAT's steering systems have been wonky at best uh, there there are a lot of linkages there you have a steering post going down to a tie rod going down a second steering post uh going to your tie rod ends and then out to uh the, the final the final rods that uh control your uh your skis so it looks like they're aiming to take some more of that steering play out of the cats because if we've got less moving parts in it then we got less steering play but obviously in this machine um we've got a complete new front end shorter a arms off the chassis different spindles uh so this is going to be a completely different though similar suspension setup the catalyst is also going to give you a, a little bit better of a heat exchanger and probably my favorite thing about this whole damn thing is a better snow flap. I've been taking snow flaps off my cats for years. I, I don't have a single cat with a snow flap on it at all. I have not since 2017, not counting my first alpha. My first alpha had a snow flap. So I am in zero way affiliated with Articat in any way, shape or form, but uh, I'm going to play devil's advocate for them here a little bit. Uh, cats engines in the mountain segment, um, even their 1000s aren't that bad, but I'll, I'll, uh, I'll specify their 800 because that's, that's by far the one that, uh, gets out the door the most in the mountain segment. So since Suzuki put their 800 in the cat, in, I think it was around 07 and they ran that engine till 2017. That engine had a long stretch of being the most powerful two stroke engine on the market. And along with being the most powerful two stroke engine on the market, was also the most reliable. And since Articat knows that, for 2023, we're not going to see an 800 class engine in it. And I think the reason for that is Articat wants to get that engine right. They want that engine on the hill. They want to be able to have it tested, tried and true, and just being able to put up with the abuse. 
that their old engines did, including the SeaTac 800, because that one's fairly dependable too. It felt to me like in the last couple of years, and I'm not gonna pick on any uh, any manufacturer specifically, but there's been a lot of um, there's there's been a lot of customer testing. <laughs> I was thinking about getting a do before this came out, but I think I think I might have to get one of these. I'm not getting the 600 though. You got you guys get the 600. Let me know how it is. I'd like to know who's ordering the 600 models. Anybody doing that? Because the the rep from Cat really tried to get everybody excited, and uh, it didn't fly. The biggest takeaway from this is probably going to be your weight savings, because if you save on your weight, uh, you're also going to get a little bit of power out of it too, if it's in the drive system. And hey, every, everybody likes a light sled as as long as it's durable. A like Cat here is uh, they're saying like a 10% weight reduction for. Uh, the crossover mountain and trail models so if uh let's let's just call it a 400 pound sled if we're taking 10 percent off of that we're losing 40 pounds off this from previous years which is a huge number so as long as we can maintain that reliability let's uh let's get let's get after it again the Revelstoke Chronicles are coming. Uh, I was supposed to be out this week, but uh, that kind of fell through. Plus, it's, you know, minus 47. But uh, you don't have to wait long now. Uh, a bunch of you guys have been killing preseason. So uh, Christmas has always really been the kickoff to the year uh, around here. So... Let's see it. Let's have a great year, you guys, and uh, we'll see you guys on the hill. Let me know what you think. Remember to subscribe, do all that. Leave a comment. Are you ordering one? I want to know. Bye, everybody.